Hey all, Blake here with another video and I'm actually really excited about today's video. A lot of people really struggle with tank mates for cherry shrimp, so today I thought I'd give you 10 of my favourites. Let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so before we jump into the 10 fish that I've got to recommend to you today, I do just want to tick off a few little provisos. First of all, uh, everything is do it at your own risk. Fish have personalities just like us and there will always be those cases of, oh, I had a murderous, you know, um, cherry shrimp that actually attacked my Oscar, which would be a strange combination. That's not one of the recommendations, but you never know with the fish keeping hobby. So there's always going to be that anomaly. So um, there's no safe bets in keeping anything with cherry shrimp. So keep that in mind. Other thing to keep in mind is put the shrimp in first. I always recommend get the shrimp first, give it a long period of time, allow the shrimp to start to repopulate, breed, and wait till you see a few little batches of shrimplets before you start to get fish because if you get fish and they do start to wear away at that population, well, you've got a bit, bit of a factory going on, so it's not gonna whittle it down to nothing. So that's important to keep in mind. And the third one on the list is, of course, keep it densely planted. Shrimp are way down on the food chain, so uh, the more cover you can give them, the more likely your success will be. So with those things in mind, let's jump straight into the list. So I'm very confident with today's list because I've tried all of these except for one. And why don't we start off with that? We'll get the elephant out of the room. But I'm fairly confident on, in, on this recommendation, and that is Hillstream or Borneo loaches. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend a loach because they do like to go after snails and shrimp and those sorts of things, but Hillstream loaches are a little bit different. They're awesome stingray looking little fellas. They'll cling to the glass, scoot along. Basically impossible to net out, but they will be too concerned with sort of keeping your glass and aquarium surfaces clean than they will going after a shrimp. I think also their profile won't really allow them to go over the top of a shrimp and really give it a good munching on. So Hillstream loaches are the first recommendation. Let me know down below if you've had anything to the contrary, but I think they should be a fairly safe pairing for shrimp. Number two on the list, uh, green neon tetras. Green neon tetras are an awesome little fish. Obviously, uh, they have the name neon tetra, which they're similar to their counterparts. Neon tetras are not on this recommendation list because they get a little bit bigger, so they will snack on some sort of small and medium sized cherry shrimp. Green neon tetras though are way smaller, but they still have that uh, fluorescent blue green coloration. So they're an awesome little fish um, and yeah, a lot of your shrimp, if not all of them, should be safe from the jaws. So give green, on, green neon tetras a go. I also find they're a lot more hardy than normal neon tetras too, so that's really good. The other one are uh, Endless Life Bearers. So I I recommend these over guppies just because they're a little bit smaller and once again, the smaller the mouth, the better the chances our, our shrimp survival is going to be. Endless though, they come in a variety of colors. They're a bit more cold tolerant and genetically, um, they're not quite as fraught with issues as some guppies are these days. Endless uh, still give you all the color in the world. They're still a great live bearer and they do all those fun things. So endless are definitely a great option to keep with your shrimp. Number four on the list, um, there is a bit of mixed messaging going around the internet with these guys, but I've kept both of them with shrimp before. I'll lump them in together because they're pretty similar. CPDs slash Emerald Rasboras. You might also know CPDs as Galaxy Rasboras or it actually stands for Celestial Pearl Danio. So, these sort of newer fish to the market, but fantastic little nano fish. Um, I don't find that they do any damage to the shrimp population, and they're both in very uh, heavily shrimp colonized tanks and with no signs of damage there. So I'm, I'm uh, practicing what I'm preaching and keeping them with shrimp, and I have no dramas. Awesome little uh, fish, keeping them in big groups so you'll probably never see them, but you get some fantastic coloration. A little something a little bit more unique than what you see every day and uh, care yeah, can go great with shrimp really fill out that tank so give emerald raspberries or cpds a go they might be a little bit spendy but they're well worth every cent if we are targeting nano fish it seems silly to overlook pencil fish pencil fish are literally called the nanostomus which means small mouth 
they're going to be a fantastic option. Most of them, there are a lot of different types of pencil fish. My personal favourite and generally the most expensive type are the coral red pencil fish. But uh, yeah, tiny, tiny mouth. They'll hang around the mid to the top of the aquarium, so they won't really bother your shrimp. And if they do, they won't be really big enough to take a bite out of them anyway. Pencil fish are an awesome dither fish and uh, can provide a bit more activity in the other layers of the aquarium that your shrimp won't provide. So give pencil fish a go. The more easy to find ones aren't going to be too expensive either, at least not in my area, but yeah, you can certainly uh, lighten the wallet on some of the more um, sought after pencil fish, definitely. Maybe another controversial one, I'm going to put betters on this list because I've tried a lot of betters with shrimp before. Always keep a backup plan though with betters because um, they can be a little bit fraught with danger. To increase our success rate, I would suggest get a nice long finned, like a Dumbo half moon better, something that is going to be a bit slower through the water column and maybe if they do decide to go on the hunt, they might realise that the shrimp are a little bit more crafty than maybe they thought and uh, they might just stop wasting their time after they have a go at it. Betters, yeah, the, you can always get some rampageous uh, betters, so keep that in mind, but um, definitely well worth a go because I really love that combination of betters as the feature fish and all these shrimp underneath the fantastic tank, H hours of fun, and uh, well worth giving it a go, even if you need a backup plan. Now for more of a safer, foolproof option, uh, and once again, they're gonna be pretty handy to have in your aquarium. Otto Sinkless are an awesome little catfish. They're not gonna bother the shrimp at all. They're just gonna mind their own business. They'll probably just hang on the glass all day. They're a fantastic little cleaner fish. One thing that people generally find is that uh, they are prone to wasting away and uh, doing so without you noticing. So make sure there is plenty of green uh, matter in the aquarium that they can feed on. Biofilm and algae and that sort of thing. So um, if you find that your tank is perfectly balanced and you're actually not growing enough algae for the shrimp and the otters. Uh, it can help to just keep a bunch of rocks in a tub of water outside, let the sunlight do its thing and then just swap in rocks uh, to supplement the diet. So give that a go, but your shrimp will definitely be safe with otosynclases around. Now to fill out the very top of the aquarium, we have clown killifish. These guys are super tiny. If you've never seen them in real life, you'll probably be a bit shocked after seeing the uh, photos or footage on the internet. When you see them in real life, you'll realize they are, they are very, very tiny. In fact, a lot of people probably have walked right past them in fish stores and not really even noticed. Clown killifish have an awesome striped pattern and they're also nicknamed the rocket killifish because their tail, at least of the males, has some really nice coloration and kind of looks like a rocket taking off. On that topic, they will take straight off out of the aquarium to so keep nice tight lids and even cover up those feeding corners of the cutout of lids because they will find that in an instant and end up as fish jerky on your floor. So we want to avoid that at all costs. They will hang out at the top of the aquarium basically all the time. So they won't even really come into contact with your shrimp at all. Give clown killifish a go. Another pairing that I really enjoyed and uh, it was working fantastically for a long time there is pygmy corys. Get a big group once again and you'll get some really nice actual mid, uh, mid water column schooling action which um, is a real good sight to see. Um, they are a bit more of a mid dweller than other Corydoras but being really small your shrimp are once again really safe. I've tried this lots and lots before and always found it to be a success. So pygmy cory is definitely one to consider on the list. And last but not least, uh, I want to provide an option in the invertebrate space. I think nearite snails make a great option. They actually uh, breed in brackish to salt water, so they're not going to overpopulate populate your aquarium and outcompete your shrimp. They will lay eggs everywhere, but they're not going to hatch, so uh, a lot of people find that unsightly, but you can take a razor blade and scrape those off uh, the glass if you wish. Also, those eggs will be supplementary calcium for your shrimp and the existing nearite snails as well, so that can be pretty handy. Nearite snails are great algae cleanup crew as well, so they're going to help um, keep a nice balanced aquarium. And uh, they come in some really, really nice patterns and colors and um, fantastic little snail to consider in your aquarium. They can be a little bit difficult to find, at least here in Australia, and they can be a bit spendy when you do find them, but certainly a safe option for keeping them with your shrimp and uh, there shouldn't be any concerns about predation from nearite snails. 
On that topic, I do just want to quickly give a few words of warning. Uh, some fish that I thought might be okay, but turned out not to be. And that will be a lot of the uh, garamis. So I had chocolate garamis, licorice garamis, honey garamis, and some others. And although some people might have had success in those spaces, I found them all to absolutely demolish populations of shrimp, seemingly killing them just for the fun of it. So keep that in mind. Also, obviously any bigger fish like your larger cichlids are gonna be a, probably a no-go. So um, yeah, just it's worthwhile just thinking about things proactively and um, maybe giving things a go like in a separate area. Take a, a couple of shrimp and the fish and just see how it goes for a, a week or so. And then before you move the entire colony over, you'll get a bit more of an idea about whether that fish is gonna be right or not. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of food for thought for your pairing with uh, cherry shrimp in your aquariums. If you like the video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.